ಪ್ರಭು ತವ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನಿ ಜಯ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನಿ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನಿ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಓಮ್ ಮೈಡಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಲವೆಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪ್ಯಾಥ್ ಮೇಕರ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾದ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸಂತ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿ ಡಿವೋರೀಸ್ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ if we were to introduce the word sacrifice to a person in public any person and we would instruct that person to tell us that when we tell you a word please give the first thing that comes to your mind suppose we give that person the word sacrifice most of us the first thing that would come to our mind is the millions of men and women in the armed forces meaning in the army who are around the world striving to protect defend this nation and its citizens these brave men and women they don't care for their home they don't care for their self but they sacrifice their time with their family with their children with their relatives and their other friends and pretty much dedicate their time effort body strength to the army so that we the people who are living in the nation can benefit in such a way this is all due to sacrifice we can see in the world that there's many many examples of sacrifice mothers sacrifice for their child teachers sacrifice for their students and it's a firefighter sacrifice for those who are in danger of a fire and leaders world leaders leaders in a country sacrifice for their people so it's a common thing it's a common attribute quality but what is the difference between such sacrifices that people make in this world such as doctors or firefighters or mothers or any person who makes a sacrifice what is the difference between them and religious sacrifices that are that have been done by maharaj himself and his ekantik satpurush and sadhus as of right now well there is a great difference because this world is different from the world beyond the world beyond this world has no qualities of this world and this world has no qualities of the world beyond they are completely different just like how oil and water cannot mix the world beyond cannot mix with this world they're just separate in the same way maharaj his anadi mukto his sadhu his parshads and his bhakto are from the world beyond akshardham and the people of this world who show sacrifice it's not a bad thing they are sacrificing their body but is there something or is there fruit after their body has pretty much paid its toll after they have left this body the soul is there any kind of fruits there that's the difference maraj 
in his mukto, sacrifice, for us here, so we can also attain a spiritual level like them and go to Bhagwan's dam and attain bliss. That's the difference. Taking that in consideration, Maharaj, when he was in the form of Nilgand Rani, for seven hard years, he sacrificed his body, he sacrificed his, you can say, kingship, his Bhagwanhood. He completely disregarded or forgot that he was Bhagwan Swaminarayan, the Supreme Lord of Lords, Autarna Autari, and without any kind of protection, oxygen, food, water, clothing, or any kind of equipment like axes or any kind of shelter he left from his birthplace and traveled around Mother India for seven long years barefoot over 12,000 kilometers if we look at this sacrifice why would Maharaj why would the Supreme Lord let's not even let's not take that take that word supreme right now and put it to the side let's just say God why would a God do this why am I saying that because if we look at the previous gods the previous devtas that have ascended from the world beyond on this earth have they done any of these kinds of sacrifices as Nilkman Verney has sacrificed in the seven years? Some gods have lived for thousands of years. Some gods have lived for 500 years. Some gods have lived for 200 years. Yet, compared to their sacrifice, Maharaj Bhagwan Swaminarayan lived for 49 years on this planet. But the way he sacrificed his whole, as I said, godship was completely and is completely out of compassion or daya, we can say. But as of right now, we want to reflect on Nilkan Verney, his sacrifice towards what he did and how he did it. Now I'm going to reference a book called Bhagwan Swaminarayan and in that book Nukun, it's written by the author that Nukun Verney himself did austerities in <coughs> Pulhasram for four long months without any food or water just living on pure oxygen without any kind of clothing as I mentioned just a loincloth and he did this for four long months without anything his bare body was covered in only a loincloth his arms stretched upwards as if invoking the sun it snowed every day and every night Nilkan's mat of hair eyebrows eyelashes and back were covered in a thick sheet of ice but Nilkan stood st stood still he chanted the Surya Mantra tirelessly for four months just amazing if we look at Bhagwan's Leela just this portion of Leela and think to our minds that how much has Bhagwan Swamiran sacrificed his self for us out of daya, out of compassion we would completely understand that this satsang that we are in right now this fellowship we can say this sect we are in right now is all due to his fruits as of right now 
as I've mentioned before, we are living in such facilities. Wherever you are, wherever you go, to temple, such facilities where they provide food, prasad, where they provide AC or heating according to the outside weather, where they provide the darshan of Bhagwan, whether it's an idol of Gansham Maharaj or another murti which is drawn, doesn't matter. But the facilities that we have to worship Bhagwan are so much or have become so much easy due to the modern age that we can definitely give a hundred and ten percent credit to Nilkan Verney's thought around 200 years ago 220 200 plus years ago due to that Bhagwan himself after Nilkan Verney came to lodge and then lived in Gatada and Dada Khachar's Darbar in different different villages Bhagwan himself said in the Vachnamrut he references in Gaudiani third chapter Bhagwan said that he's talking about his Nilkan Verney era of that seven years and he says that I felt I wanted to eliminate all the remnants of my mother her flesh and blood this is how much vairagya or non-attachment Bhagwan possessed from my body. So after many spiritual endeavors, I emasicated my body so much that if something pierced my body, water would come out, but never blood. Bhagwan's intention it was to show us to develop non-attachment to this world because we are just temporary alien, aliens, residents of this world. Even if we think, if I can give you an example, I can just take my example. I am right now 26 years old. I want you to think of your age in your mind. Some might be 15, some might be 18, some might be 20. I don't know, maybe there's older people even listening, 40, 50. Taking my example again, I'm 26 right now. Think to yourself, just add one more year to your age and subtract. Where was I? Where was this body 27 years ago? You have no idea. You don't remember, do you? Okay, let me ask you another question. An average human lives the age of approximately 70 to 80 years but no more we can say not more than 110 years that's just not the that's just the capacity of the human body as of right now to live on this earth let me just put a bumper suppose I'm again 26 suppose where will I be or where will I go after another hundred years well, if you're a satsangi or a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, you would say Akshardham. But if you're not and you're just viewing this lecture, you probably don't know. You're clueless. And if you believe in another god, you would say whatever realm or whatever place that is, abode. But in reality, due to our karmas, we really don't know where we would go. Proving that Maharaj what he's talking, what kind of vision he is describing in this Vachnamrut is that to detach oneself from this body and attach to Maharaj, dedicate each and every Indriya senses to Maharaj so that we can attain his divine abode Akshardham. This is what Maharaj is referencing to. But the main point is Maharaj's sacrifice. Let's focus on that. So taking that point into consideration of the Vachnamrut Gaudiani third chapter, Maharaj says, I do not want to leave even blood or water in my body. And if one pierces me, only water would come out. That's how much Vedic Maharaj had. What is the reason for all this? Why is he talking like this? Well, in Sarangpur 17th chapter, Maharaj says, or sorry, Sarangpur 16th chapter, 
Maharaj himself says that <clears throat> God performs harsh austerities out of extreme compassion for and for the benefit of those people who realize the rarity of attaining a human body. Maharaj is only doing this out of extreme compassion. This is, this is his hetu, his reason for doing all this austerity. He has compassion upon these souls that are on this akshardham or are on this earth to attain akshardham. Due to that, Maharaj's compassion, he has to sacrifice. He has to lose something. I'm sure all of you have heard of the quote, if you want to gain something, you have to lose something. This also applies for Bhagwan and also is a Kantik Satpurush. Because they're on this earth and due to because they're on this earth they have to live according to the standards of this world because if Bhagwan showed his greatness if Bhagwan just snapped his fingers he would be able to liberate all souls any souls that he wanted but he wants each and every soul to understand the rarity of attaining God why because suppose I get let me give you an example Suppose I get a diamond and someone gives it to me as a gift. I don't know its value. I know that diamonds are very valuable, so I'll keep it in a safe. But how valuable, I don't know. But if you ask a miner from South Africa who's mining diamonds inside, deep down, underground, in the earth, and you tell him, and you bring this diamond to him, and you tell them, could you tell me the value to this diamond? Two things would happen. He would either snatch it from your fingers and run away, or number two, he would be appalled and be like, this diamond, I've never seen such a big diamond. I've been working here my whole life, digging for diamonds, and I find these small diamonds, but this rare diamond is so valuable, it's priceless. In the same exact manner it's priceless to see that Maharaj and his mukto sacrifice so much so for our own benefit now Nilkan Verni he has done this for our benefit but Maharaj himself showed us through his example that I have done this through compassion but let's there's always a question that arises that Maharaj was Maharaj and he did this 200 years ago but is there anyone here on this earth right now that is doing this for my benefit or not my benefit but is just doing this in general well yes the answer is yes the Ikantik Satpurush the God realized self realized Sadhu who has the 30 attributes of a Sadhu who is completely engrossed and attached to Maharaj himself and is not attached to any of this world he himself has this compassion why because Maharaj himself lives inside of him and does his works saying that the only reference that comes to my mind is our Puja Guruji those who know him on a deeper surface or deeper level will understand and will get my point and their heart will fill with softness or affection for him due to the words that I'm about to describe but those who do not know him those who are still new those who are completely clueless by even understanding and listening to the type of compassion that will be described that Puja Guruji possesses you will also feel like meeting him you will also feel like how could such a sadhu sacrifice so much without any kind of intention well the only references I can give are of his life and there is this one story one event that happened I want to say 20 plus years ago when 
the building of Kandari Guruku was not even built. In Puji Guruji and only a couple of santos were living in a two-floor small building behind the grounds of where Kandari Guruku is. Kandari Guruku is a school building. At that time it was not built but it's pretty much the grounds where in the future the building was going to be built. Puji Guruji at that time was living in just a small two-story small small building there with a couple of santos. Now the process of the school building was going on so they're digging because of the foundation they had to obviously pour cement there and they're digging and uh, that at that time th the workers that were digging came across a cobra snake the cobra snake obviously anyone seeing this two things would happen one is if one didn't have anything a weapon or anything he would run away or number two if you had something he would kill it because obviously cobras are venomous and the person doesn't want to be bitten out of human nature it's our nature to defend ourselves or to run away and still protect ourselves these are the only two things humans possess as a instant and uh, it's a normal nature that one each and every human possesses Bhagwan has given it to him so the workers were digging. Puja Guruji was observing from afar all the work. And at that time, Guruji did not know. But as the workers were digging and the snake came closer, they became alert and yelled, Cobra, Cobra. And Puja Guruji also went a little closer and saw that these workers were picking up their axes and were ready to pretty much kill the cobra. Guruji said, No, no, do not kill the cobra. It's a living being. Let it go. Just w walk away from the cobra. It will go away itself. But these workers, at that time, they didn't know what to do. Both the workers, they were very, very afraid. What if the snake bites us? Bites us? What if we cannot run away on time? What will we do? So they attacked and killed the snake right there and then. Puja Guruji's mood during the afternoon at that time, it was 3 p.m., in the afternoon completely became completely deteriorated he felt so bad upon seeing such an act and right there and then Puja Guruji went to his room and started to do bhajan a couple hours went by and at the night time it was time for Puja Guruji to take prasad thar of Thakurji so Santos called him and said Puja Guruji please come and take Thar. Puja Guruji said nothing and continued to do bhajan. The next day Puja Santos again called them in the morning. Nothing, no answer. Just constant bhajan, Mara. Afternoon, dinner time, same thing. One whole day Guruji did upas. Nothing. The second day Again, Puja Santos were like, now Puja Guruji will obviously come. So everyone was very, very eager. And a couple of more Santos went together to encourage Puja Guruji to come and take a little bit. So his energy would come back from his body. Because obviously if you do not eat for one day even, your body completely goes and cuts in half strength-wise. Puja Guruji denied again and continued in bhajan. He did this for that half a day and then two days, so 2.5 days he fasted without anything. And then he came the next day and did a little bit or it took a little bit of breakfast. But Santos there asked Guruji, what is the reason? Because not all the Santos knew or not even any Santos probably guessed why Guruji did these fast without any kind of reason it was not Ekadasi, it was not Hari Jainti it was not Poonam, none of this Guruji just did it so Santos went there to Puja Guruji and asked Guruji, what is the reason why you fasted and Puja Guruji revealed that those workers they did not know and 
they killed this poor animal and for their animate meaning prayajit for their mistake I have done two upasas because there is two workers so one upas is dedicated to one worker and the other upas is dedicated to the other worker along with the bhajan that Guruji did for the whole day for both the days and due to that I did not eat think about it a selfless sadhu without any kind of cruel or motive intentions sacrifices his own body meaning he did not eat anything his time meaning he did not even engage with devotees or santos for kathavarta nothing his own you can say time where he can be free he can do some kind of activity extracurricular activity anything he wanted to nothing he completely engrossed his two and a half days in bhajan and in tap for the animate for the mistake and prayed to Maharaj to forgive these two workers they did not know just because of a small act now let me ask you something just think in your minds we see a lot of this a snake is a dangerous animal but we can even see small things such as we can see people or we probably witnessed before in our life of someone killing a rabbit or an animal any kind of animal think about it have we decided to do anything have we decided or did it even come across in our mind that this is wrong I am talking from a satsangi perspective not for those people who live in the world but those who are satsangis have we thought of doing some kind of prayachit or some kind of animate for that person so God would not punish him and God would forgive him no that's the difference Bhagwan's anadi muktos Bhagwan's great great liberated souls they are living on this earth for others they have no intention of coming to this earth for their own pleasure because they have no kind of they have no ruchi or they have no kind of uh, like for this world but Maharaj in the Vachramrut says in Garuda middle chapter 55th Vachramrut that all my activities are for the sake of the devotees of God there is not a single activity which I perform for my own personal enjoyment this is the level of Maharaj but it's also the level of the Ekantik Satpurush because Maharaj lives through the Ekantik Satpurush and he does this work not only that this was just a small incident but Pucha Guruji's life is just a big sacrifice you can say night and day he does Vichran without any kind of without looking at his body's health at one day he would be 400 or 500 kilometers away from where he's supposed to be and that whole day he would drive and reach that area just to attend a small opening or just to attend a meeting or just to meet a single devotee Guruji has gone and has traveled hours and hours and days just to give happiness to one single devotee not only in India but also in the United States Puja Guruji's dedication and sacrifice is far beyond comprehension even a small person like myself even if I try to describe it's completely undescribable yet I'm trying to help you understand that the great sadhu's sacrifice is only for our compassion so our role is to view and see that Puja Guruji is sacrificing for myself and to help him to help him take us to Akshardham we must try to dilute our sabhaos we must try to engage more with Bhagwan. We must try to engage more in Kathavarta. We must try to engage more in the association of 
Puja Guruji and Santo. That's the only way that Puja Guruji would become pleased and would see that my compassion, my daya, is actually affecting this person. Puja Guruji right now is doing Dharna Parna, meaning it's a Vrat where Guruji eats one day and the next day he doesn't eat anything. It goes on. He's been doing it probably for four or five months right now. Four or five months without any kind of saying or anyone telling him. But the reason is that the great sadhu does not need any kind of tap, bhajan, but he is doing it for the sake of other sadhus and other devotees so they benefit and they attain God. His health, his, you can say, he's, he becomes suppressed. His sacrifice, one of his greatest sacrifices is that he uplifts others and he hides behind the uh, curtain, not showing himself, not showing that he is actually encouraged and fueled the person that is ahead and that is becoming greater and greater in satsang. He completely hides behind the curtain. This is a great sacrifice. There's so many, but we due to limited time, I think you would be able to understand that Puja Guruji, only a great Satpurush, only a great, great person on this earth living can do such a deed. But only when we think more and more, it would happen. Lastly, I want to leave you with a quote by John F. Kennedy. He said to the people of the United States, ask not what your country can do, put, do for you, but what you can do for your country. I want to replace country with Maharaj and Guruji. What can Guruji and Maharaj do for me? No, that's the wrong mentality. We should be so much in the form where what can I do for Maharaj and Guruji to make it easier for them so I can attain Akshardham. I can attain it so because do we really know or have what it takes to do this this kind of sacrifice are we willing to make the sacrifice for others for our family for our mandir for puja guruji the choice has always and will always be in our hand saying this my humble jay swami Sharamani Adarsanam Mandaha Saruchira Nanam Bujam Pujitam Suranaro Tamir Muda Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai Dharmananda Namaham Vichintai 
श्री गणश्याम महाराज जय ऑलमाइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलोड गणश्याम महाराज पाथ में कट वो लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ डिटीज जय स्वामी नारायण लास्ट संडे वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट खुशाल बट मीनिंग सदगुरु श्री गोपालानंद स्वामी हाउ हुई मेड भगवान स्वामी नारायण इन जैतलपुर नाउ फ्रॉम दैट डे खुशाल बट गोपालानंद स्वामी ही स्टे फॉर यूर विथ महाराज एंड संतो आफ्टर मीटिंग महाराज एंड आफ्टर Uh, after the inspiration and uh, direct command of bhagwan swami narayan khusal bar himself stay with santo and as we know santo always travel from one place to another only for preaching rules and regulations and code and conducts always come to my home for lunch and dinner now after he seeing his devotion and his pure heart kusal but accepted his request and once upon a day kusal but went to sadashiv's home and sadashiv as he knew that uh, kusal but was there in his home for lunch and dinner so sadashiv and his wife they had made many delicious different different things and as the time was that for a lunch they have first offer thal to bhagwan in their home mandir this is a ritual this is a rules in each and every satsang is home that whatever they eat first offer it to 
ഭഗവാൻ ഇൻ ദ സെയിം വേ സദാശിവ് ആൻഡ് ഹിസ് വൈഫ് ദ ഹാവ് ദർ ഓൺ മന്ദിർ ഇൻ ദർ ഹോം ആൻഡ് ദ ഓഫർ ഥാർഡ് ടു മഹാരാജ് The another thing was that when Khusal Bhatt came to Sadasiv's home at the same time with Khusal Bhatt, Maharaj also in his divine form came to Sadasiv's home. But nobody can see Maharaj. All can see only Khusal Bhatt, meaning Gopadana and Swami. now when sadasiv and his wife were offered thal to maharaj at the time bhagwan swami and himself divinely started to eat one by one things and because of maharaj's mercy only sadasiv and his wife can actually see maharaj is eating from the thar but all other people they also the other devotees and the other nearby people neighbor and others they also gather in sadasiv's home for darshan of kusal but gopalan and swami they could not see bhagwan is eating but they only can witness that Sadasiv and his wife had offered many things in a thar meaning sweets puri shak the other many different things in a thar as maharaj eat one piece of sweet then it detected from plate meaning lesson and all can witness this if maharaj took us small bite and put the another portion written in plate that all can have darshan of that things but not of hands of maharaj or any part of maharaj this is the magical thing but all of those they are godly person that's why they all can believe that bhagwan swami and himself come here and he himself eating these things when bhagwan drinks water from a glass all can see that water listening from glass and sadasiv and his wife only these two person can see that maharaj is drinking water meaning these two persons they can have darshan of maharaj maharaj is drinking and maharaj is eating but all the other devotees they have only darshan of maharaj's divine thought but they can also understood they can also understand that maharaj is present here and they also understand that this is all because of kusal bhat if this is not then we always meaning every day we offer thal to bhagwan but before this time this will never this was never happen in past so why this is happen today this is only because of kusal bhat now in this way whatever maharaj eat and give it to prasad to others this everything can be seen by sadasiv and his wife and they also understood that this is only because of kusal bhat now after this incident they feel with a great glory in their mind to kusal bhat all this prasadi and in this way kusal bhat every day come to sadasiv's home and at the time of thar offer to maharaj maharaj is eating and sadasiv and his wife have darshan of maharaj this is daily routine and niskudan so rat in this chapter that kusal but stay there in vadodara for one month and 
at what place or in whose home so the uh, khusal but went for eating food there maharaj was also present and first when duties offered thar to maharaj maharaj himself accept their devotion in this way many many types of divine incident happen in life of kusal kusal bhat kusal bhat is nobody but our sadguru sri gopalanand swami after this incident kusal bhat has already detachment he is he was totally detached from worldly matters worldly life he had no any kind of attachment with his relatives and that's why he requested to maharaj maharaj please initiated me in sadhu fold i want to stay with santo forever my life now maharaj initiated him and named him gopalanand swami after some days after some months maharaj declared in satsang that gopalanand swami is the formal son of our sampraday now after that once upon a day after many years passed of this incident gopalanand swami again come to varudra with many santos when first he came at the time he was kusal but meaning he was not initiated as a sant but still as he came directly from aksardham with maharaj so maharaj forever stay with him and that is why all can have divine experience because of kusal but's presence even today whenever we have also darshan or any presence of any such divine person or divine sant then we can also experience the same what the devotee in varudra experience in the company of kusal but the same kind of divine experience we have when we come in contact with such sant now the second time when gopanand swami come to varudra and stay for many days but at that time there was no rain even though the monsoon season passed still that is not a drop of water come from sky and that's why all devotees requested to gopalan and swami we have no rain and that's why if you show mercy if you pray to maharaj then because of maharaj's grace rain fall and as rain fall then all can become happy all the people all devotees animals and everybody now as kus gopanand swami declare start to chant bhagwan's holy name and as devotee started to chant holy name of bhagwan swami narayan swami narayan and after some times there was very heavy rain the enough rain and because of rain all became very happy now another time when gopanand swami come to vadodara at that time that was a uh, that was days of janmashtami meaning krishna janmashtami now at that time in each and every mandir devotees prepare a very nice hindoda and in that hindoda they install bhagwan's murti or bhagwan's form and in this way all devotees celebrate bhagwan's birthday now this time kusal but uh, this time gopalanand swami came to vadodara with many santos and devotee requested gopalanand swami swami this is the day after tomorrow of krishna janmashtami so we also want to celebrate the festival as bhagwan swami himself command 
give command to all devotees to celebrate this uh, festival then gopanand swami said okay then all devotees make all kinds of preparation like making hindora and decoration and everything and at the day of celebration gopanand swami and all santos came at the place but at what place gopanand swami went bhagwan himself come with him and this time on a hindora devotees devotees did not require any kind of idol or murtis of bhagwan because gopanand swami's prayer bhagwan swami and himself divinely come and sat on hindora all devotees have darshan of this divine murti of bhagwan swami narayan and even bhagwan swami narayan gave darshan to all devotees and all devotees one by one came near to maharaj and have darshan of maharaj and after that after many years maharaj disappeared from hindora but all devotees have divine darshan and that's why they all become very happy and they all understood that this is only because of gopalanand swami now just think for gopalanand swami if gopalanand swami was there in vadodara at first time sadasiv and his wife have darshan of bhagwan and all other devotees they have also the divine experience that bhagwan is eating thar now the second time all devotees have darshan of bhagwan swami narayan face to face now just think for us we have today same ekantik santo like muktanand swami gopalanand swami with us we have attained a divine company of our puja guruji and that's why what your divine experience we many times experience divine things this is all because of guruji's presence because at what place guruji stay at what place guruji sit or at what place guruji even walking even his even with his walking maharaj himself walking with him even when guruji sat on a sofa or in a chair at the time bhagwan himself also sat there so whenever we have darshan of guruji at the same time according to the vachanamrut we should believe in our heart we should believe in our mind that i have darshan of bhagwan himself in this way after giving darshan to devotees bhagwan swami narayan disappear and because of gopanand swami's prayer to maharaj maharaj had gave darshan to all devotees and in this way gopanand swami even rescue all devotees and non devotees from days of non rain in this way all devotees as understood gopanand swami's glory and from attachment with bhagwan swami narayan they all bow down to gopanand swami and gopanand swami and all devotees pray to gopanand swami that you have this much power to fall rain you have this much power to give us happiness by giving direct darshan of bhagwan swami narayan but at that time gopanand swami himself says no i am nothing whatever you experience divine things or divine darshan of bhagwan that's all because of bhagwan swami narayan go uh, sadguru niskuran swami wrote for this sentence when all devotees bow down to gopanand swami and pray for his divine experience then gopanand swami himself said to this group of devotees 
बोल्या गोपाळ स्वामी ते प्रत्ये जे थयू ते श्रीजीनी सामर्थे बीजा थकी ते काही न थाय ठालो बुलो फोगट फुलाय वी हॅव मॅनी टाइम मॅनी टाइम्स लिसन द सेम थिंग फ्रॉम अवर गुरुजी वेन एवर इवन ऑल एक्सपिरियन्स दॅट दिस टास्क परफॉर्म बाय गुरुजी इवन द गुरुजी डिडन डिरेक्टली इन्वॉल्व इन सच थिंग स्टील ऑल कॅन बिलीव्ह दॅट दिस इज परफॉर्म बाय गुरुजी विथ हिज डिवाईन पावर अँड वेन devotees and santo pray to guruji for these things or even some devotees that thanks to guruji then guruji said no i am nothing whatever happen whatever good you experience this is all because of my maharaj in this way we have also attained the same मुक्तानंद स्वामी गोपाळानंद स्वामी गुणातानंद स्वामी ब्रह्मानंद स्वामी निस्कुडानंद स्वामी ऑल इन वन इन फॉर्म ऑफ अवर पूज्य गुरुजी इफ वी बिकम अस्टॉन्ज डेवटी इफ अवर हार्ट्स बिकम प्युअर लाईक सदाशिव अँड अ डेवटीज ऑफ वडोदरा देन वी ऑल एक्सपिरियन्स डिवाईन थिंग्स ॲट प्रेझेंट ऑफ अवर पूज्य गुरुजी This is the only things written in this 142 chapter of Bhakta Chindavani by Nishkudanand Swami. In this way, after writing many incident, many divine incident happen in life of Sadhguru Sri Gopalanand Swami. Nishkudanand Swami concluded this chapter 142 of Bhakta Chindavani. Sri Ganshyam Maharaj Nije